What did you do with Mike Piper? You ready? Let's get a count of our daily Bible readers. Okay, now if you need a quarter, if you'll raise your hand, Barry has some of those too. You know, last week we studied about the report that the spies brought back from Canaan, from the land of Canaan. And um, if you remember, Caleb said, we should by all means go up and take possession of it, for we will surely overcome it. But then ten spies gave a bad report. So if you would, turn your Bibles to uh, Numbers chapter 14. I want to read the first ten verses, and it's... um, we're end up reading a lot of verses in the Bible today, but I want to, I want to use these ten verses to help set up our lesson from this morning or for this morning, so you'll understand one why God was so mad, and two Moses' reaction to it. Numbers chapter fourteen verse one. Then all the congregation lifted up their voices and cried, and all the people wept that night. All the sons of, me, sons of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron, and the whole congregation said to them, Would that we had died in the land of Egypt. Do you remember this statement? We talked about it not long ago. They made almost the same statement. Or would that we had died in this wilderness. Why is the Lord bringing us into this land to fall by the sword? Our wives and our little ones will become plunder. Would it not be better for us to return to Egypt? So they said to one another, Let us anoint a leader and return to Egypt. If this had been on a boat, this would have been a mutiny. They wanted to get rid of this leader and start over. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces in the presence of all the assembly of the congregation of the sons of Israel. Joshua the son of Nun and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, of those who spied out the land, tore their clothes. So here's the four leaders of this group, of this congregation, of this huge group of people. And they're about to stone them. They're in front of the crowd and and they're in trouble. They tore their clothes and they spoke to all the congregation of the sons of Israel saying, The land which we pass through to spy out is an exceedingly good land. If the Lord is pleased with us, then He will bring us into the land and give it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey. Only do not rebel against the Lord and do not fear the people of the land for they will be our prey. Their protection has been removed from them and the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. But all the congregation said to stone them with stones. Then the glory of the Lord appeared in the tent of the meeting to the sons of Israel. We see so many reports on TV now we've become almost numb to it. But we see how how inflammatory and how dangerous and how quickly a crowd of people can turn. You just have to believe if one person from about three rows back had thrown a rock at this time, they would have stoned everybody would have stoned all four of these great leaders. That's the, that's how out of control this crowd was. They were mad that they had been led out into the wilderness. They had, they were mad that they had been had had helped to escape the the slavery that was in Egypt. And basically they were just frustrated and scared and mad at whoever was there. And in this case it happened to be Moses and Aaron and Caleb and Joshua. Now, this quarter, we've already studied a lesson about the Israelites complaining and wanting to go back to Egypt. Uh, Then we studied about how the 70 men were chosen to help take some of the burden off Moses. We've talked about Moses' own brother and sister uh, turning against him and how that was dealt with. And then we talked about the spies last week and going into the land and what they brought back, some of the great riches that they brought back out of the land to show the people as evidence of what a great place we're going, where God has promised us. This week we're going to talk about Moses as the intercessor. Um, hopefully we'll get 
Well, it might be more, but hopefully we'll get three points out of this lesson. God is completely holy. God is completely just. Leaders should consider the example set by Moses in the text. And then we want to see out of this text the, the strength or the, uh, the value of prayer. Now, turn to page 33 in your book. We're going to read the text from this morning. It's, it's Numbers 14, 11 through 30. Then the Lord said to Moses, How long will these people reject me? And how long will they not believe me with all the signs which I have performed among them? I will strike them with pestilence and disinherit them. And I will make of you a greater nation and mightier than they. And Moses said to the Lord, Then the Egyptians will hear of it. For your might you brought these people up from, from among them, and they will tell it to the inhabitants of this land. They have heard that you, Lord, are among the people, that you, Lord, are seen face to face, and your cloud stands above them. And you go before them in a pillar of cloud by day and in a pillar of fire by night. Now, if you kill these people as one man, then the nations which, you, which have heard of your fame will speak, saying, Because the Lord was not able to bring this people to the land which He swore to give them, therefore He killed them in the wilderness. And now I pray, let the power of my Lord be great, just as you have spoken, saying, The Lord is long-suffering and abundant in mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression. But He by no means clears the guilty visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generation. Pardon the iniquity of this people, I pray, according to the greatness of your mercy, just as you have forgiven this people from Egypt even until now. Then the Lord said, I have pardoned according to your word, but truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord, because all these men who have seen my glory... And the signs which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness and have put me to the test now these ten times and have not heeded my voice. They certainly shall not see the land of which I swore to their fathers nor shall any of those who rejected me see it. But my servant Caleb, because he has a different spirit in him and has followed me fully, I will bring into the land where he went and his descendants shall inherit it. Now the Amalekites and the Canaanites dwell in the valley toward, I mean tomorrow, turn and move out into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. And the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, How long shall I bear with this evil congregation who complain against me? I have heard the complaints which the children of Israel make against me. Say to them, As I live, says the Lord, just as you have spoken in my hearing, so I will do to you. The carcasses of you who have complained against me shall fall in the wilderness, all of you, who were numbered according to your entire number from twenty years old and above, except for Caleb the son of Jephunneh and Joshua the son of Nun, you shall by no means enter the land which I swore that I would make you dwell in. An intercessor, an intercessor is an individual who steps between, who who mediates, who pleads for an accused. And that's basically what, what <coughs> Moses became. Not necessarily willing and not on purpose, I might add, but that's what he became. When the nation of Israel decided to follow the ten spies report and not go into Canaan and revolted against God, they were about to stone Moses in verse 10. They were, the people were so mad they were going to kill their leader. On the other side, God was so mad at the people for rejecting Him and for passing up on the opportunity that He had given them, He was going to kill them. And poor old Moses was stuck in the middle. It wouldn't be a good place to be. But Moses spoke up. Uh, had the courage to try to talk God again out of killing these people. He put his ego aside. Think about it. These people were, the, were considered, not necessarily were considered, they were the, the children of Abraham. 
That's the way they were known. Abraham was the patriarch. Moses was the leader of these people. Moses could have just said, God, you're right. Let's just strike them off the earth. And he would have become the patriarch. He would have been the famous one because all these would have referred to themselves as children of Moses. It would have been a new, a whole new chosen people. But Moses didn't, he didn't take advantage of that. He, he argued with God and he, he reasoned with God, don't kill them, God. It'll, it'll look worse on you if you do. And he, because of his reasoning and because of his speaking up, the children of Israel were saved, at least for that moment. Now, the part about holy and just, God had, had given these people an opportunity to do what they needed to do. And they wouldn't do it. They wouldn't go on into the land right then the way God told them to. So because of that, even though God says He pardoned the people and He forgave them, He had um, Moses lead them out into the wilderness to wander for 40 years. Now that we've got our our uh, 2020 hindsight, we know what happened. We know that they were led back into the wilderness to die off, basically. And as God put it there in those last verses, anybody 20 years old and over that weren't named Joshua and Caleb, they weren't going to make it. They were just going to be led out into the wilderness to, to die. And that's what happened. He cleansed the people. Now, this is the second time, I told you already, this is the second time that we've heard Israel start this complaint of why did you lead us out of Egypt? If you'll remember the first time we heard it, Moses is up on Mount Sinai receiving the Ten Commandments. And when he comes down the mountain, Aaron has been helping the people create a golden calf for an idol. No, no quicker than Moses had turned his back, they had already been led away. And Aaron, the second in command, or, or at least the most famous, maybe he wasn't in command, but he was the most famous probably, is leading them to do this. And God gets mad and he decides then, Moses, stand back. I'm going to wipe them off the face of the earth. And Moses again talks, them, talks God out of it. Well, here we see the same thing happening. That was all in Exodus 32. I want to point out that um, Moses' prayer didn't presume to force God's hand. He didn't say, look, God, if you're going to kill them, I'm going to quit. He didn't give him an ultimatum. He didn't stand up and fight God. He just reasoned with him. Here's what would happen, God, if you do this. This is the way the people that are left that are watching us and watching you, this is the way they're going to react. And it looks as if he was able to talk God out of it. But he did visit the punishment. He, he brought the punishment on the people anyway. We, we, um, we're very quick to point out that God is a loving God, and He is a loving God. And we need to stress that. Every chance we get, we need to keep that in the forefront of our mind. But we don't need to use that as a... God's going to let me slide this time because He's a loving God. This is a pretty good example of He didn't let them slide. He forgave them. He continued to let them live. But He didn't let them go on to their reward. And we need to... There's a big lesson we need to see and learn and remember there.
You know, lots of times we think we've gotten away with something and it eventually comes back to haunt us. And that's, we see that out of this lesson also. That's the children of Israel probably thought, well, God, maybe they didn't even realize how close they were to being struck dead. But if they did, they probably thought, well, we've gotten away with it this one more time. But we see that later they didn't get to go into the land of Canaan, although their children did and their grandchildren and their descendants. Yes, W.A.? And I know it's easy for me to say this standing here this morning, but you just have to wonder about these ten people. They were... They were chosen, if we went back to the beginning of that chapter, they were chosen because they were leaders of their tribe. These were not slackers. These were men that were respected, apparently at least thought by their peers to be wise men. Then they got to go into this land and see what was there and see what could be taken. But they just didn't, going back to what Don said, they didn't have that courage. They didn't have the whatever word you can think of, fortitude, the strength to stand up and do what it took to receive this reward. And again, it's, it's easy for us to second guess them, but, but you just wonder, are there, are there generations that are coming after us that are going to look back and say whatever they pick out from us? Why didn't, why didn't America rise up about the about this sin or that sin when they saw it coming? Why did America slip away from prayer in schools and, and, and that kind of thing? Because that's, that's, the, that's the thing living today. I feel like we look back and see these, these uh, things we used to do when I was a child that, that we've gotten away from. And, and it's not politically correct to, to criticize sin anymore. It'll get, it will get you criticized to stand up and say, hey, this is sinful. That's what we see now. And we see people made fun of over that. And somehow we don't have the strength to, to call that out. And you see it happening a little bit at a time. It's so slow that you don't notice. And it's you know we we talk about that frog being boiled and he doesn't feel the heat. Well, that's that's and kind it, of the way it happens. Probably, that's that's true. We probably we probably don't understand that we are insulated, but we probably are. Consider we we call we talk about us being in the Bible Belt, and there is some protection from that. I, I think. Um, I wanted to read just a little bit of the of the uh, closing that the author had written because because it goes back to these three points that I, I mentioned when we first started. It's easy for us to think of God's wonderful love and mercy. We must not forget that He is completely holy 
and He is completely just. Consequently, we can't expect God to ignore sin. We, we tend, to, we tend to, to lean on the fact that God is a loving God and we have, He has mercy on us and that type of thing. Uh, but remember how Paul talked about just because He has mercy, does that mean we ought to go out and sin on purpose? Uh, to place God's attributes in competition with one another is to misunderstand the total nature of God. It's not competition for God to love, but for Him to be just. That's His nature. It's all tied up in one package. Rather than working in isolation, the attributes of God operate jointly. God is completely loving and God is completely just. His second point was leaders should consider the example set by Moses in this text. Although his position was threatened by the Israelites, uh, Moses did not seek their destruction when he could have very easily. He could have just agreed with God and wham, they'd have been gone. But he didn't do that. Uh, Instead, he petitioned God on their behalf. If Moses had been selfish, he might have encouraged God to destroy the people, but he did not. Moses was satisfied being the leader of a great nation. He did not presume to be more. Again, God said to him, Moses, let me wipe them out and I'll raise a great nation from your descendants. Moses would have gotten a field promotion, it would be called. But he didn't take that advantage, or take advantage of that fact and the chance to do that. That wasn't the type of leader that Moses was. And then the last point, This text serves to illustrate the value of prayer. Imagine what Moses did. It looks like the way we read this, he changed God's mind. Now that takes some faith. You know, we we read about Jesus telling us if, if we had the right kind of faith, even just the faith the size of the grain of a mustard seed, we could move a mountain. God had the audacity, I'm sorry, Moses had the audacity to ask God to change his mind to spare these people, and God did it. From everything we read, God was intent on wiping these people out. He didn't say, God, I'm talking about God now. God didn't say, hey, I think I may go ahead and wipe these people out. He was going to do it, and Moses talked him out of it. So again, the power of prayer. Okay, that's what I have for this morning. Do you all have any more comments? Yes, Jack? I guess reading this, I have to think that these people complained so much they finally wore God down. This wasn't the first time they complained and and it wasn't just one cat out of the 600,000 or a million two if you count in the children, the, the women and the children over there complaining. Apparently it was everybody and they were very vocal about it. They weren't trying to hide it. They weren't whispering around amongst themselves. They were... They were about to kill their leader. They were going to stone Moses and Aaron. So this was a big deal. And they were, they, they were the ones performing the miracles that God told them to. And here you are, you're going to stone this person to death. And all of them are to have you killed. They were that fear song. And this was the generation that walked between the mountains of water, cliffs of water, whatever you want to call it. This, this wasn't a generation or two later which would have had an excuse to forget what God had done for them. They had been fed months before, maybe weeks before, out of God's bounty, the quail and the and the manna. It um, they may have deserved killing. If I'd been in God's place I'd probably snap my fingers. They'd been gone. Anyway, I appreciate you being here and I appreciate your attention.